I'm Mason Mount. You're listening to the London is Blue podcast. All right, let's move on to the midfield. Uh, Mason Mount, again, super hybrid as far as where you want to put him, but I think he would say he'd like to be considered a number eight run box to box. I gave him an eight, Dan with a nine, Nick and Phil both with an eight. So I guess, Dan, since you're the outlier on this one, nine out of 10, I'm assuming that's for Mason and not as a Premier League player. Yeah, that is for, for Mason. I mean, when you think about you know what he did last season at Derby and the fact that he was just two goals off of his goal total there, had the same number of assists, um, you know, just leveling up his game from going from the championship to the Premier League isn't necessarily going to be easy. To do it at a club like Chelsea is going to be even more remarkably hard to do it across is even going to be more difficult to do nonetheless to do it in the center. And I think received a lot of maybe unfair, undue criticism, kind of very similar to the way that I think a lot of supporters gave uh, Jorginho Flack last season for being sorry, son for, it was the Lampard son mentality around Mason. But uh, even when he had kind of down spells was the player that Frank looked to, to try to really, make the the high pressing the high octane performances come alive and you know i think uh you know available for every match you know, even when he rolled his ankle early in the season phil and you thought maybe he was going to go through a little bit of an injury spell uh was always made himself available for a match and, and that just made it easier for frank to put him in the 11. yeah i think you you hit the nail on the head when you said that he defined how lampard wants this team to play he was the epitome of what the team will look like moving forward. He did everything to a pretty high standard. He worked as hard as anybody, perhaps in the league. Uh, he's available. Availability is an ability. And apart from a quiet spell in January and February, you really can't place too many knocks on him. Yeah, his his ability to play in so many positions, uh, really, I think he was almost sacrificed. He probably could have made more progress if he was a little played a little bit more consistently. But um, Frank relied on him to kind of be the the glue, no matter whatever the formation was. So we saw a lot of different looks from Mount, which again, I think he had a great season. Jorginho, um, probably on the other hand, sadly, Nick, I had a six. Dan and yourself had a five. Phil had a four. You know, we we're like great. He can not play under Mirzo Sarri's, you know, handcuffs. He can show us the complete footballer he is. And we saw some glimpses, some really good assists from deep in the midfield. But again, overall, I think as vice captain, not, not the performance we were hoping for, for someone that we spent $55 million on. Yeah, I mean, his season really is broken out into two parts, right? The first part is, you know, he was definitely a guiding kind of light at the beginning of the year when there was so much youth being integrated into the squad. And I think he was a reliable leader at that point, but I mean, his performances certainly fell off uh, in the second half of the year. And, you know, I think the weirdest part of the season that they are all going to maybe not remember is the fact that Ross Barkley took the penalty in the Champions League against Valencia when he was on the field. Um, it's just, it, it was so awkward and, and strange for Frank to have to deal with. Um, so I, I give him a five because I, I don't think this was a good season by any standard for him, but you know, I think the way the team is playing is changing faster than he is able to change with it. Look, he's a super specialist. And like we've seen with wing backs, like we've seen with other players, the problem is the manager changes. It's hard for you to integrate. And I think we just haven't seen enough adaptation from Jorginho to really, you know, look ahead and be like, yeah, he's got a future in this team under Frank. It's it's a bit concerning, obviously. So probably one, I'm sure the club are looking to flip. Kovacic, on the other hand, now I'm, I'm back to the other other hand, is that sevens, except Phil gave him a six. So Dan, before we get to Phil, we'll let you lead with the seven. Uh, many people called him Chelsea's player of the season. Maybe had a bit of a drop with the restart, but it's a weird season for everybody. And uh, I, I will say and raise my hand that I don't necessarily get the player of the season shouts. Uh, he is not in my top three for player of the season. And what? I, I, yeah. I think you're uh, forgetting what he's done earlier in the season. Yeah, dude. And that's okay. Uh, look, Continue. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, he did not score any of the same goals that Tammy Abraham scored to win his critical points. I, I think when you, 
look at the way that he plays. Um, I think what will be very interesting and telling is when we look at next season and if we get some of the names in, like a Kai Havertz, if we get a Declan Rice in, I think you will see Kovacic play a specialist role in the way that Jorginho did this past season. Um, I just think he, you know, if we're going to play three midfielders and you have Mason Mount, Kovacic, and Jorginho, you need both of those two other midfielders to be players that can can score and assist with regularity. And that's where I found him to be lacking this season and where he continues to, to need to improve to offer more to this team. Yeah, you know, I think the sideways passing and the recoveries, I mean, he, he gets dispossessed uh, enough for it to be a bit of a problem. But that's why I was uh, struggling. Okay. Uh, interesting. I mean, Phil, I guess you had the low score on him. So I'm interested in hearing your perspective too. Maybe you echo some of that. Yeah, absolutely. There are, there are so many frustrations with him because we see what he can be capable of at times. We, we joke over the years that there's good Pedro and there's bad Pedro. Well, there's definitely good Kovacic and there's definitely bad Kovacic. I think he's been miscast as a press resistant, which is a term I hate. Uh, a press resistant deeper midfielder. I think he's probably at his best as uh, a box-to-box sort of player where you can allow him to go dribbling and have somebody to sit in and protect behind. I think Kante's absence in particular um, affected Kovacic more because he's he's really not very suited to, uh, to, to defensive duties. I think you've seen that Real Madrid were happy to get rid of him and keep him to a backup role when he was there. I think you see that he doesn't regularly start for Croatia and I think that's telling. I think he has enough limitations. There's a place in the squad for him if you have a recognised defensive talent in midfield and then you can allow Kovacic to become part of the rotation to go between the boxes because he's got the technique, he's got the attributes to transition the ball through the lines. Uh, Not really with the passing. I don't think he's a great passer of the ball, but there's a place for him to transition with dribbling. But for everything that he gives you one game, he will infuriate you the next. 